I'm here to ask. Okay. Now, when we hear the word well-groomed, what does it mean? The three things that we need to keep in mind to be a well-groomed person is we need to have a good appearance, we need to be well-spoken, and last but not the least, we need to have a good behavior. Now, I'll be breaking it down for you. Now, what do I mean to say by a well-spoken person uh, and, you know, a well-groomed person. We want to break it down so it's easier for you to understand. We all know when we go to uh, parties or we meet a person, we come back, oh my God, she was so well-dressed, she was so well-behaved. We remember that person. Why? Because that person has taken an effort to create an impression in the mind of us or the others they are meeting. And how have they done it? That is, they have worked on these small, small things together to create the better version of them, what they wanted to, you know, create the right kind of impression in the mind. First thing is well-spoken. So what do I mean to say by well-spoken? You need to choose your words correctly. You know, when you are conversing, so you need to think before you speak. because we get very stipulated time to impress someone in front of us. So when we are speaking, we need to know what kind of words if we use will impress the other person whom we are interacting. This is the first thing you need to keep in mind. Second is good diction. Diction ka matlab kya hai? Pronunciation. Whatever you are speaking, Jobi language, whether it's English or it's Hindi, you need to be clear. Whatever words, because you can't fumble. Then what happens, the other person will feel that you have confidence nahi hai or uh, the message that you are delivering is not, uh, not, not being delivered in the right way. So take care of your pronunciation. And in good diction, there's another thing is accent. Sometimes when we want to impress someone, we're going to a nice restaurant or, you know, where we are heading towards a meeting, we try to put on a fake uh, accent. We don't want any US or UK accent. We more, we, what we expect from you is a normal Indian accent. That is what impresses the judges. That is what impresses others. That is we are being ourselves. Right. So keep that in mind when you are communicating. Third is controlled voice modulation. So what do I mean to say by controlled voice modulation? It's when if agar I'm communicating, I'm giving a speech or my flat speech board view. It's just going flat. I'm not being able to impress my other person because it's like just, you know, flatly saying something. That is where my emotion comes in. You know, your eyes should speak. Your, you should smile when you're having a conversation. I'm just giving you an example. Uh, suppose I have to give a speech in front of my judges and, uh, and I have to impress them. I would say, good evening, judges. My name is Adelina Gambri and I am from the city of Joy, Kolkata. By profession, I'm an niche consultant and I love practicing dance. I find solace and comfort in practicing Bharatanatyam, for year, which, uh, which I've been practicing for years. So when I'm saying this, I'm not going flat. Do you see there is a spark when I say my name, my city, and uh, when I practice dance? So these are the things I want the judges or the person I'm communicating to remember. So the points, or the words you are, uh, you know, you want the other person to remember, you need to emphasis on that. Of uh, course, smile karna chahiye. Your eyes should be bright when you're speaking it. Then only the other person around, the other person across the table will understand, okay, fine. She's actually excited and she's actually believing in what she's communicating. Then comes under voice, uh, you know, modulation, suitable inflection. What do I mean to say by that? It's like 
when you're starting a speech or you're starting a communication you know there should be a modulation you know uh, you're ending it with a flair or you know sometimes when we say a poem or a speech we go a bit low so depending on the way you've written your speech or depending on the way you need to communicate if you have to give a very important message to the other person you know try to go a bit slow a bit flat there so that the other person will remember so that's where we start controlling and using the suitable impression fourth point is speed of your speech it is very very important because it's not you know uh, we can't uh, go on repeating uh, you know go on in, in, uh, speaking in a just you know like a train is moving because the message is not uh, being understood by the person what is important in communication it is not what you are telling the other person it is the other person needs to understand what you are communicating and when do we consider a successful communication has taken place when your the message that you are giving is understood by the other uh, other partner or other end whom you want to make understand you want that person to understand and that is possible by, through the speed of speech so don't just you know run like a train or don't be so slow that the other person is bored a bo like ye kitna time leke bol rahi hai i i rather go to another contestant so be very crisp in your conversation keep your speech small crisp to the point and with the right emotion fifth point is listening skill if to be a good communicator you need to have wonderful listening skill until or unless if you are a, if you are not a good listener then you won't be able to be a great communicator why am i saying this suppose when we are going to the final round of questions answer round and you know uh, you are thinking that you know i have not been able to uh, uh, understand the question you can be very polite and ask the judges is it possible that you repeat the question once so these are the ways you know you can buy time and at the same time do you know create the right kind of impression in front of the judges these are very subtle things we just need to work around these things to be a well groomed person okay any questions from any contestants आप पूछ सकते हैं बिकॉज दिस इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म एनी कंफ्यूजन लाइक यू नो हाउ डू आई यू नो स्पीक प्रॉपरली और वॉट आर दिंग्स आई शुड कीप इन माइंड यू कैन आस्क मी ओके आई थिंक वी आर गोइंग गुड आई गो टू द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ बींग अ वेल ग्रूम पर्सन दैट इज गुड अपीरियंस नाउ वॉट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड बाई गुड अपीरियंस You know, there is a word that pair, pairle, darshan, dari. Uski baad gun vichari. That is very important. That is how we create the impression. Whenever we meet a person, the first thing we see, okay, how well dressed that person is, or uh, you know, uh, how that person is looking. Right. That is where our appearance comes in. Now, how do I appear pretty? How do I appear good? How do I create the right impression? The first thing is being well dressed. वेल ड्रेस का मतलब क्या है लाइक अच्छे से ड्रेस करना उसका मतलब क्या है थिंग इज वेर एवर वेन एवर वी आर गोइंग आउटसाइड वी नीड टू सी आर क्लोथ आर आई एंड इट्स नॉट लाइक वी आर जस्ट टेकिंग आउट फ्रॉम अ रैक और जस्ट लाइक दैट यू नो इट्स फाइन वी कैन गो हेड इट इट्स वी आर जस्ट गोइंग फॉर अ कैजुअल थिंग नो बिकॉज हु एवर यू आर मीटिंग दे आर क्रिएट एन इम्प्रेशन यू आर क्रिएटिंग इन द माइंड ऑफ दी अदर्स सो wherever you're going you need to keep in mind your clothes need to be ironed second you need to dress appropriately for a occasion and what do i mean to uh, say by appropriately for an occasion color of attire if it's an afternoon even suppose it's uh, like we're going for a brunch or we are meeting our friends try to wear light colors contest maybe you know you get uh, it's it's been mentioned that you know carry clothes cocktail clothes carry gowns for evening gown round so carry, you you need to wear light colored during the afternoon and for evening parties you can uh, select dark color gowns dark color dresses like uh, black 
or red, purple, and also the material of the clothes. In the afternoon, you can wear something which is a chiffon, which is georgette, and at night you can wear, uh, you know, the materials which is sequins, uh, satin, raw silk. So these, this is, these are the differentiating materials which we also need to understand when we are, uh, we, when we are wearing our clothes or we want to be a well dressed person. Color combination. So sometimes uh, what we what we feel that you know we go to a shop and we pick up stuff. Here. Okay, fine. This is this trouser. This at the top is very good. Right? No, we can't do that. You know because you have already entered a contest. You've already uh, you know we've taken the first step to you know you've promised yourself to be a well groomed person. So we need to understand the color combination. A lot of materials which is available in the internet to understand what kind of colors goes with what. If I'm wearing a white color trouser, if I'm white ke saath, kya -kya colors I can wear shirt me or as a t-shirt me, what will it go? So there we call it the color wheel. Because a color wheel is made up of three colors: primary, secondary, and tertiary. So with this combination only, if you understand the color wheel, you can understand what are the combination of colors you can use. So you just need to study a bit and, you know, uh, you will never go wrong with the color combination. And trust me, when, you know, people will start noticing you and they will say that, uh, I, how is this change happening? Because it happened with me. Even I used to pick up stuff like that and I used to think, okay, fine, I can just match with, uh, you know, the uh, yellow color uh, top with uh, just a beige color pant. But when I understood about the color wheel, I read about it, I started wearing the color combinations the right way and I could make the mark in the mind of people whom I wanted to. The third thing that we need to uh, keep in mind about uh, being well-dressed is the type of dress. Now, I don't know whether uh, most of you are aware of it because in the water management session, maybe I'll take about the different types of body, body types we all belong to. Um, Lucas, we all girls, we have a typical different body type. So we need to um, identify whether we are our glass body type, we are a square body type, a triangle body type. Why? What happens? Once we understand what our body type is, it's easier for us to understand exactly what type of dress we need to, will suit us and it will look nice on us. Because it has happened many a times, you know, my uh, contestants or my whom I teach, they, they go to the best shops, they pick up the best gowns, the best uh, dresses, it's not looking nice on them. Why? Because they're not buying something which will suit their body type. Similarly, if you buy something which is simple and it fits to your body and it, it, it matches to your body type, you will look much better. So you have to understand your body type and where you select the uh, dresses and purchase the dresses accordingly. The, body, the neckline also. Some people look very nice in V-neck. Some people look nice in brown neck. Why? It's your body type which actually you know, decides which will uh, look better, in, better on you. So these things we need to know, we need to be aware of it. It's no rocket science that we need to, you know, uh, go through a lot of these subtle things just makes us a well-groomed person. And one more point which I would uh, like to mention as you are contestants out here that we have a habit of buying online stuff. But uh, if you're going for a contest and if you are, and there are important rounds for you, I would suggest always try your clothes before buying if it's possible, I know it's pandemic and uh, it's difficult to for some of you to go to the shopping mall and select your, clo your clothes and everything. But uh, preference would be that you know you you wear what the dress and then buy it because of the fit. If you uh, if you don't have the right kind of fit, then you won't be comfortable in it. And uh, don't try to you know wear clothes which you're not comfortable i've seen people wearing off shoulders and this is pulling it up or the spaghetti is falling off from one side no that's the no 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 because you're drawing the attention of the other person in the wrong way you're not creating a positive impression so wear what you can add that is very important you know whatever you're comfortable in because when you will stand in front of the mirror you will be able to understand that you know 
okay fine i am comfortable in this i can carry this well and i can be myself when i am wearing this dress okay now in good appearance also comes good hygiene this is a basic maybe you have heard about it a lot of times but we tend to forget it so what do we understand by a uh, good hygiene first first very important is clean manicured nails those who are comfortable going for nail extension uh, and gel extension is absolutely fine but if you're going for it try to go for neutral colors because we don't want the entire attention to fall on your nails you know like a, a jet black or jet red color go on subtle nude colors or uh, you know solid colors which are on the lighter side because these are the colors of elegance is yes, of course for wedding if we go we can have a red nail polish done and everything or your dress is red you can match to it but if you are if you if you're on a regular wear or you are you want to paint one color in your nail that should be a nude color that goes with all all the tires that you're wearing at the same time it's it's uh, it's classy and if you are a person who doesn't believe in nail extension gel extension you can just have your nails manicured keep it short and have just a single transparent nail color there that's it but no chipped off nails chipped off nails is just a turn off for the person at the person you communicated why am i telling you nails why am i giving emphasis on nails so much when hum log jo baat karte hain na there's a tendency to use our hands a lot because we want to express hum humko samjhana hai what what's there in my mind so people tend to notice your nails right so be very careful uh, you know with, with your nails just try to keep it clean uh, it's not that you know you have to go for gel extension nail extension every month if you're comfortable it's fine otherwise you just keep, you need to keep clean manicured nails second is your neat hair do we all know about it you know when you are communicating with the judges or the world, don't you know go you go on doing this and this because the attention of the judges or the person you're communicating should be on you they should be seeing your expressions they should be you know concentrating on what you are what you are speaking rather than in your hair your hair you're fidgeting with your hair you're in there third thing which is important in good hygiene is wearing a pleasant smell perfumes you need to wear them and as i mentioned uh, earlier in my session that there are certain perfumes for afternoon and certain perfumes for evening how do we segregate that you can you can go for uh, you know slight floral kind of uh, smell in the afternoon and would be spicy perfume in the evening and don't uh, sprays are something which i don't encourage because perfume with something where the smell stays on for long and don't uh, wear smells like axe and everything we don't want an axe effect you know you enter the room and people ask you about your perfume no the rule of a perfume is the smell should be such that the person you are communicating or sitting next to that person should get the smell not the entire room because we because of when we are communicating the other person you know sitting uh, we just opposite to my table or sitting next to me that person is important not the entire room that you know we we create an axe effect so select your perfumes accordingly fourth point is no bad breath even if you had you know i know indian meals have onions and something and uh, we 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 just forget and you know we have to meet a friend or we have an important meeting we can't have the bad breath right either use a mouth freshener and or um, if you can do a mouth wash before going meeting someone please do so but bad breath is something which creates a negative impression please try to avoid it fifth point is well kept in good hygiene well kept means you need to wax yourself because you can't go as a teddy bears when you're meeting someone else so this is basic when you uh, are me uh, meeting someone and everything uh, you know you uh, you need to do your waxing properly and especially when you're wearing a sleeveless you need to take care that you have to you've shaved your arms these are basics these are basic hygiene that we need to keep in mind because people observe us okay any questions so far about how we take care of our appearance and how we communicate 
Uh, Adelina, there is one question in the chat box which says the difference between both the voice modulations, if you could tell. Okay. Uh, the difference between control of emo emotion and of suitable infection. So what control of emo emotion means when I am saying I'm happy, right? I am, do you see my eyes are sparkling and I have a smile on my face. That is where I'm saying control of emotion. Suitable inflation is, you know, when I start on a high note, hi, everybody, I am Madalena from the city of joy. And then I hope you have a great evening. I'm going low. That is in the highs and lows of a, um, a conversation is suitable inflation and control of em emotion is through your eyes, your smile when you emphasis on certain words. Am I clear or, uh, you know? The person who has asked the question, is she clear about it? I'm sorry, I can't read the chat box from so, here. Nandita, if you could give a confirmation. Uh, yeah, I'm totally clear about it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Okay. Now we have understood about, uh, you, know, you know, the basic of being a well-groomed person. What are the tips of uh, you creating a long-lasting impression on the person that is important to us, whether it's in the corporate field or in the glamour field or our loved ones? Because we always want to be you know, looked upon as a person of you know of you, you to be remembered. So these are the few points that we need to keep in our mind, and it doesn't happen in one day. We need to work on it, and when we work on it, I'm sure we can be the better versions of who we are today. First is timeliness. We all know that timeliness is next to godliness. If we respect the time of others, they will respect us. So if a meeting is scheduled at six o'clock, I would request, I know there is traffic. I know we have to take care of children at home. You guys have to take care of children, your work at home. Try to reach the place at 5.45. It creates a good impression. I, I It has happened with me from my personal experience because when I reach meetings before time and my client is sitting out, uh, you know, on the other day, on the other side and he sees me appear, coming before him, it has created a positive impression. So these are subtle things. You know, when we walk around with the subtle things, we become what we want to. Second is energy level. We Do we really like to see gloomy faces or do we really need to uh, like to hear negative uh, conversations when we meet others in, in today's world? No, we, we like to hear good stories. We need to, we like to hear positive advice. So whenever you're, you know, you're having a conversation, try to keep up the energy level, which is positive and or try to have an eye contact. I speak a lot. You know, we, we there's a say, you know, eyes never lie. So try to communicate with uh, your eyes. Try to have that spark in it. Okay. Third thing, as I've mentioned, we need to look good. We need to smell well. And that is when you understand your body type. You understand exactly what to wear when. That, you know, it will be very easy for you to understand, uh, you know, be a well-dressed person. Fourth is we need to be polite. Politeness is a virtue and we need to work on that. You know, uh, sometimes says we, we confuse between being assertive and arrogant. It's a very thin line. There's a thin differentiation between uh, being assertive and uh, being arrogant. So when you're having a conversation and you need to mention your point or you need to justify your point, of course, you need to be assertive. Otherwise, the other person will not take your conversation seriously. But that doesn't mean you can be arrogant. Suppose I, were, I would, if I'm communicating, I'm showing a difference between being assertive and being arrogant. If I'm having a conversation with my manager or with my client, I would say, uh, sir, I don't think, uh, you know, we should go ahead with this idea because uh, these are the things uh, which we need to keep in mind as discussed before. This is being assertive. And if I'm being arrogant, sir, I don't think we should go ahead with this idea because uh, we've already had a discussion and uh, this point was not mentioned. You see the face change. Being assertive, I'm having a flat face, but I'm, you know, I'm putting emphasis on the point and I'm mentioning 
I'm being assertive as my expressions are showing and you know, I'm being arrogant about you. So these things you need to keep in mind. One thing which is very important is sense of humor. Some of us are born with it. They are the lucky people because sense of humor uh, works like wonders to a lot of people. You know, when you're having a conversation, you remember that person who has such a good sense of humor. But if you don't have a sense of humor, you can always build on it. You know, try uh, thinking, you know, what will make the other person happy or, you know, in a conversation, narrate a very funny incident so that people will remember you. And remember you in a positive way. That is important. And another thing which is important in creating a long-lasting impression is being to the point and succinct in your conversation. What do I mean to say by to the point? In today's world, and especially when you are now contestants, you will be given stipulated time to uh, you know, give your speech or you know, answer your questions, right? So when you are speaking, don't you know talk about history, geography, and everything. No one's there to hear that. So you know, be very careful. Choose your words and be crisp because you have to give the message: who you are, why are you in the contest, what 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 does this platform mean to you? Everything you need to me in a very crisp manner. And uh, for creating a good impression and long-lasting impression, you need to be a good listener. As I mentioned, a good communicator, a communicator is a person who has made the other person understand what he wants to communicate. For that, you need to listen to the other person. What I usually do, and I think uh, that has helped me, uh, I'm discussing about a plan and I've communicated, okay, uh, these are the points that I would be taking care of on that particular day. So is it fine? And the other person nods. But I asked him, uh, you know, uh, so have you understood these points? And then he repeats, okay, yeah, these are the things you're doing, right? So what happens, we both are aligned. What I have expressed has been accepted by him and he has understood that. That is where a communication is complete. You know, we usually feel that I have mentioned what I had to, so my communication is over. I am a great communicator. I mentioned all the points which was there in my head. No. If you have not made the other person understand what you're communicating, what you have been communicating, then you're not a great communicator. You need to understand the subtle things in the communication. Last but not the least is be yourself. Whether it's front of in front of the judges, whether in front of the people you want to impress, you need to be yourself because after a few conversations, they will understand whether you are faking or it's your true self. Any questions so far with regarding creating long lasting impression, Harry? Or we are good to go to the next slides. I think uh, she's on mute. Oh, okay. Let me take you to the next topic, which is what are the things you need to keep in your mind when you are introducing yourself in a contest? I think there has already been a session taking place. I'm just, you know, um, just quickly going through it. First thing which I suggest my contestants is you can start with a quote or even end with the quote, but you need to believe what the quote is so that the judges will remember you. Instead of you know just saying that I am from I am this, I am from this particular city or whatever, you can identify a quote which your life is, you know, you believe that your life relates to it, you can start with it. Second, you need to mention your name and which place you are from. And uh, in a national contest, we mention the city we are from. For, for example, if I'm from Kolkata, I would say, Hi, everybody. My name is Adelina Ganguly. I am from the city of joy or the city of sinful sweets. Okay. That is how you introduce yourself in national contest. And when you're mentioning about your city, try to add a description. So, you know, the judges will answer, okay, she has just, uh, she has taken that effort, that extra effort to find a nice objective, and she loves her city. She, she's representing her city. So keep that in mind. And then internationally, you have to, you have to say, 
about your country and mention something which is absolutely unique about India. And I know we all love our country and we have a lot of things to share about the country. Third point we need to keep in mind is the purpose. Why are you in this contest? Did you, did you just want to be one fine morning, you woke up and want to be here? What is the purpose? Because that is very important. Judges need to see the intention. Because when they're selecting someone and that person will be the face of the contest, they need to believe whether the person who's coming to this contest, she believes in whether she will be able to take the name forward. Okay, so you need to mention the purpose properly. You can end the entire uh, speech with a flair so that the judges will remember you. The entire purpose of your speech in, you know, in the contest is making the judges remembering you, believing that the purpose that you're here is suitable for the, the entire contest, okay? And as I mentioned, humor works wonders if possible Try to add a touch of humor when you are communicating. Remember, a genuine smile works wonder. You know, we, we do understand when a, you know, a contestant is, you know, she's just trying to put on a smile or she just has a genuine uh, smile on her face when, she, you know, when she's giving the answers, when she's introducing herself, okay? Now, how do I, uh, you know, start working on my speech? You need to keep in mind what I mentioned before and start writing about your accomplishments because we need to also know what you've achieved in your life. What if you've achieved anything in, in the following spheres, like, for example, spirituality, you've done something in that sector, you have served the community in some purpose, you have become, uh, you know, you, you've just changed your uh, fitness regime and you've become a fitness person. What was your journey in one line? What your hobbies are or what you've done for nature? Try to include these points. And you, you know, when you start writing a speech, you feel, okay, these are the five important points which justifies me or this is who I am as a person. But find out the most important thing and trim your speech, okay? You start with a quote. You write the purpose why you are here. Third, you mention something which is unique about you. Fourth is something, it's your hobby or what you've done in your life. And fifth, you end it with a flip. So your speech is perfect to be delivered to the order, to the judges. Okay. Any questions for how do you introduce yourself in a contest? Or are we good? Uh, Ma'am, can you repeat the last sentence, please? Uh, introduction, then after, uh, means uh, name first, after that. Okay. First is you can start with a quote. Okay. Second is uh, you need to mention your name and the city you're coming from. Third is a purpose. Why are you in the, are you there in this contest? Okay. Fourth is something which is unique about you. You know, why, why should we select you? Why should you be the face? Fifth is you ended with a flair, ended with a statement where you are justifying what the points you have mentioned before and it will help the judges remember you. Okay? Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Now, this is something uh, we usually practice because uh, I, unfortunately, due to pandemic, we are having an uh, online contest, but it's interesting. Of course, it's interesting where you get to see um, virtually everyone. But uh, when things will be normal and when you will meet all the beautiful uh, friends, I'm sure you're going to meet them in person, all the participants. So there are certain things we need to keep in mind when we are introducing ourselves. And it's not only with regard to the you know, contest, it's with regard to your personal life when you're meeting, you're going out for an important event or there's a conference or uh, you, know, you need to create the right impression in the mind of others is when you greet, we need to stand up. Don't sit and say, hi, I am, you know, I am Nikita. Hi, I am Amrita. We've been, no. You need to show respect, you know. Sometimes we feel that, you know, she, she doesn't respect me or something. Why? If you don't show respect to the other person, the other person will also not respect you. 
So you need to stand up and greet, but step a bit forward. We are not going to bow like this, but we are going to lean forward. Why do we do that? You know, leaning forward means we are taking a one step forward to make friendship with you, or we are taking an attempt to, you know, be, you know, uh, giving a positive vibe. That's why we lean forward. We don't go back forward when we're introducing ourselves. Third is when you're communicating, have a good eye contact when you're having a conversation with the other person. Fourth, maintain a smile. Smile works wonders, you know, in conversation, as I've mentioned. Maintain a warm smile. Fifth is shaking hands. You know, shake, how you shake your hands speaks about your personality. A weak handshake means that you are not a confident person. So it's very easy to shake hands. You take your right hand outside outrightly. You know, just grip the other person and just shake your hands for one, two, three. Count one, two, three within yourself and then give a smile and just take away your hand. And just, you know, sometimes people just, you know, go on shaking their hands when they're having a conversation. No, that's not a professional way of shaking hands. It's just, you know, it just, you know, hold it, uh, grip it, firmly grip your hands with the other person you have, you're shaking hands and just count three seconds and take your hands away. Okay. That is how we have a proper handshake. You, know, you do a proper handshake with the person you're meeting. Okay, and one thing which is very well appreciated is if you greet a person with his or her name, that is important, okay? It is, if you can remember the name, then it's very good. And suppose, you know, at times it happens that, you know, uh, you've forgotten the name, you can, you know, you can be polite in saying that, you know, uh, hi, I'm really sorry. Uh, I've just forgotten your name. Um, you know, I am Adelina. May I know what your name is? Or we can just say, hello, uh, nice to meet you. I am Adelina. I'm from Kolkata. What about you? Something which is subtle like that. Okay. Your voice should be clear and audible when you're communicating. As I mentioned, each and every word, your pronunciation should be clear. And before, you know, you, when you're ending a conversation, add something so that the other person remembers. For example, if I am having a conversation, I would say, hi, this is Adelina Ganguly. I am from Kolkata. I'm an image consultant. What I would like the other person to remember is two things. That I am from the city of Kolkata and I'm an image consultant. Okay. Is it clear? How do you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, Adelina, they are saying yes. And there is one question. Uh, yeah. They've asked, kindly provide some example of end it flare. Okay, just, uh, I'll just do, just give me a moment. I'm just, I need to send a text to someone of an event. Just give me. Sure. Okay, so ended with a flare. Ended with a flare means ending, ended with a statement where the judge, the judges will remember you. So something, you know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, I, I am Adelina Ganguly and I'm an image consultant and I want eight crowns. Something, this is what we end with the flare. You know, something which the other person will remember. Okay? Ma'am, but that is the question. Uh, when we start our introduction, we started mm -hmm. with our name and what we are actually. And mm -hmm. ma'am, then the question is, uh, we have to end it with something with the with the that will provide a good impression on the judges and they'll remember right. in a positive manner. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, something which you will create is, suppose for me, I would say that I have uh, represented my country in Greece. I, uh, I would say that I've won eight crowns nationally internationally. For you, you might say, you know, I have done my master's in uh, dance and uh, dance is my passion. This will make the other person remember. Or you would say that I have, uh, you know, participated. I, I love nature and I've planted around 100 trees with 
uh, with, with you know my neighbors in my compound something like that that the judges will remember you a positive thing is uh, you know created in the mind of the judges okay ma'am that's great okay. ma'am understood thank you so okay. much thank you so much so now uh, the most i would say the most important and important aspect of argument is posing so as we see the left uh, the, the left picture this girl this is we call the sapya sachi pose and it's one of my favorite poses to be honest so what is pageant posing all about it's about having the uh, right energy the right confident confidence the right poise the right emotion so every pose that you are going to give it on stage or in a photo shoot to tell a story we we say that there should be a, you know picture should have a composition when you are looking at a picture okay fine look at her eyes look the way she has posed that should be coming out from the, each and every pose that you're giving in a contest or you're giving it in a photo shoot okay now what do we mean to say by poise we hear the word she she has great poise you know uh, she posed in such a way what is poise all about it's like when poise means you need to stand straight your tummy needs to be tucked in the shoulders should be back and try to relax okay and you need to radiate radiate confidence and that is what all poise is about can you see through two pictures this girl is slouching do abi is is this particular posture looking nice on her no but when she is you know standing in, in the straight way when she is standing with poise i'll just show you when you am you know uh, how to stand with poise and i'll also show you uh, two great poses that 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 usually uh, we do in you know in the ramp walk or we are posing for a photo shoot i'll just share that later okay creating curves it's something which is very important you see how the girl is posing out here she is she's balancing her weight in in one of her legs her legs are apart and she's using her hands you know so we do you think the do you think that you know just standing straight pose is better or when we walk around we create angles we look better when we are posing so that is the main funda or all about posing so it's about balancing your weight using you know we call hands and your legs as accessories you know how do you use it in a proper way to create the right kind of uh, composition in the ramp or in a photo shoot so move your limbs away from the body when you're posing for this posture in most cases we keep our legs apart sometimes depending on the body structure the leg apart distance varies try to create angles with angles with your hands with your legs with your head you know that will give better dimension to the entire picture also you know if we be just become stiff when you pose like this it creates a lot of tension in the muscles that is not that is not what we desire when we are walking on the ramp when you create angles you are more relaxed you can pose better and the entire uh, you know the picture which is the photographer is going to click comes out much better okay any questions we are good okay great so these are some examples of stand out position another position is creating angles putting weight on one leg and shifting it to the other and for some straight positions are also nice okay see on the left corner it's a bow legs look how both the uh, two, uh, two feet are just you know looking up, uh, like this it's like a bow you see and how she has bended one of her knees to create this angle then we have the beyonce triangle which is very famous when you're posing for photo shoots that looks very nice the torso thrust we see you know when we go for national inter in feminine miss india when we're, when we're wearing their crowns and we are you know blowing their kisses uh, for the photographers they usually you know, would you do this particular position which called the torso uh, the torso thrust position okay now stand out is the most desirable and the most used pose for uh, pageant for ramp walk 
it's the safest it's the easiest you're not experimenting a lot what do you need to do you need to put one leg in front of the other and one one arm in front of the other front leg pointing forward and your back leg at 90 degrees okay i'll be just showing you how do you pose like this uh, harry just guide me if uh, you know you can see me properly yes yes sure Uh, okay. Am I visible? Uh, Arulina, the legs are, part isn't visible that well, so you need to go. Let me just see my laptop. Just give me a moment. Oh, man, can you see my legs or no? Yeah, uh, but thoda piche ho jaiye, please. Ha. I'll get my laptop here and then move back. Now, yeah, yeah, pretty good. Okay, so as I mentioned, stand up position. One leg comes in front. The other is not the one and back is ninety degrees. One arm is here, another arm is here. It's not like this. It's not straight. It's just an angle. And do you see the angles of your arms like this? It's the easiest one, and it's you. you it's a very graceful pose when you're walking the ramp. So I'll show you how you walk. In the ramp and pose like this. So I think you've already had your session on ramp walk. But just to say, this is the head ramp. You walk like a cat, as we call it, the cat walk, and then you pose like this. You can also do the same thing like that and take a turn, shift your legs, and again do it. Okay, is this clear? Any questions from anyone? So far, I think they are clear. Okay. Yeah. Good. There are some more positions of stand out. The profile position. Do you see how beautifully she has stood here? You know, looking at the cab, you know, looking at the audience with the angle she has created. Then we have the flabbing the position it's it's a more fancy kind of posing we usually do it for uh, con uh pageant uh, photo shoot poses then the victoria Be beckham stagger pose we can work we can also work uh, you know use this pose when we are working on the ramp the toe point toe point is another uh, pose that you can also use uh, when you're walking the ramp i'll be sharing the pre presentation will be shared by you so you can just you know uh, you know see the poses and you can Practice this in front of the mirrors. So if you have any family members, ask them to take pictures. Because then only you will be able to perfect these poses when you are you know, going for the final ramp round. Sitting. So sitting uh, poses are very important because uh, once you have entered it, they, I'm sure you're going to get assignments of you know, working with different paths. Brands and everything. So you need to start experimenting with your sitting postures. You know, legs and your hands should complement each other. And hands be a very important role. Suppose I need to pose with my hands. If I do this, then my entire weight is, you know, this I'm looking bulky. The same thing I just can do like this. Or I can just pose like this. Or put my hair like this and do it. You know, these are the subtle ways. This, when you start practicing in front of the mirror, you will get the best poses where, you know, you're going to look good in. But this is, this is all about practicing. Now, pageant room photograph is an important thing. Uh, when you were in the, I mean, if you're, we used to have it you know, where we all were together. So simple things that you need to keep in mind when you're going for contests is, uh, you need to have that curve, you need to have that right kind of expression in your eyes, you need to have the genuine smile when you are posing for a pageant group or picture, and each of you should be visible. You know, you know, usually there is like shifting from one, you know, people are pushing here and there. So, you know, we, I would say that you need to be matured enough and see that, you know, you can position yourself well and you look pretty, okay? Facial expression. Now, this is something you need to do your homework on. It's easy, but you need to work on it. 
stand in front of the mirror to selfies you will, and with the help of selfies we all love taking selfies i know when, when you open your phone i think the selfie section is filled with pictures right so uh, practice in front of the mirror and with the help of selfies understand which is the side of your face which comes out better and then start with the expression start working on the expression which will look better on you start with the neutral and then start working on your eyes working on your smile okay smile is something which is very very important in a facial expression start working on it and we usually don't only smile from our mouth you know we usually say that you know uh, we smile from our mouth it's smiling from your eyes you need to practice that it comes with practice and once you have got the hang of it there is no going back into going back from there hands as i have mentioned that hands and legs form a very important position hands are great accessories we need to use it properly and in whatever pose you are giving never ever show your palm because it's taking so much of surface area of a picture right the focus should be your face the focus should be your figure not your palms because palm is something which people people don't want to see so always try to uh, you know give a position where the palm is not visible okay now useful tips for posing or having the right uh, expression fake smile it works we need to work how to give the perfect smile in an pageant second thing is chin forward and if you have a when the professional photographer takes your uh, pictures they will say chin up chin down start practicing don't pose like this where your chin is too up because the focus is coming on your neck or like uh, down so the, the, the entire focus is more on this area you need to practice a balanced way where your chin is properly looking at the camera you know this can only be done facing the mirror have i'm taking your help from your family members by clicking pictures okay third thing is piercing eyes now what do i mean to say by piercing eyes suppose you want to give an expression you just you know look down and look at the camera like this this is piercing eyes it's very subtle and uh, it gives a right kind of impression and what are headlight eyes you know sometimes you want to look uh, you know we want to do extra something no we want a very subtle kind of expression with the right piercing eyes with the right spark in your eyes then real uh, you know we we some we are sometimes confused what do we do with our lips you know we keep it open or how do we when we having a neutral kind of expression and creating kind of uh, that in a particular look we can have rela relaxed parted lips now what do i mean to say by relaxed parted lips it's like You know, you stand in front of the mirror, eyes pierced, and your lips should be parted like just like this. This is what relaxed parted lips is all about, and trust me, the pictures come out very well with it. Then we need to keep in mind our head. How much tilt are you know when we do a uh, walk around with the tilts of our head? Which how much does look good with our? Uh, with our body posture with the entire thing you know you you do it with practice you know whether you think so much looks better or a slight tilt looks better when we are taking selfies or we are taking pictures you need to understand that that is that comes with practice and with uh, you know with understanding the right balance of your face so uh, you need to just you know work around with it you know first of all when even i started posing or my contestants started posing they were uncomfortable working around with what i've mentioned you will be uncomfortable so it's not that you need to perfect it at the first go but after practicing a number of times when you will be comfortable that you know i look best in this pose so you know when you go in front of the photographer you'll be able to give up uh, you give your best so start working on it from now to be the best you have to give your best in front of the photographer and never ever shy from experimenting you never know when the best shot comes out the photographer you know usually tries to you know motivate the models or the contestants you know you can experiment to so try experimenting with the looks that you know with the poses you want you can do you can and maybe you know you know that okay, this pose looks so nice on me i'm going to pose this in front of the camera man. there are certain things we are not supposed to do when we are Being clicked in a contest or in the right forum, 
that is laughing too much. You know, we don't want haha in an artificial life or a comic laughter. No, we, we, that is not expected. Second is relaxed, pierced eyes is good, but no headlight eyes like this, you know, looking as if someone has seen a ghost. Third, try to be natural. And, you know, uh, try to pose as if you're radiating confidence within yourself. And for pageants, we don't want this victory sign, peace sign, or duck face. No, we are getting room to be elegant ladies, right? We are going to hold the crown. We are going to, you know, hold the titles. So we need to be graceful ladies to hold it. So these are some things which we do when we're in college or we are out with our friends or, you know, we're having fun. But when we are coming to this platform, we need to keep this in mind. These are some of the typical pageant poses which has been, uh, you know, practiced and uh, by the winners of different contests. So you can practice in front of the mirror these poses. They, these really look nice and uh, uh, it's easy to perform. It's no, no rocket science. Just see the way they have worked around the curves, how they have held the, the hands and the waist, the angles they have created with the legs. More positions for more poses for photo shoots. See how they have worked around with the hands. So we have they have kept their hands. You know, each and every finger is visible on the left corner of picture. Do you see the way she has rested her hand on the sofa? It's all about creating curves. It's all about experimenting. It's all about knowing your body and knowing which pose will suit you the most. Okay, these are some of my poses which I love giving. The, Left one is a very, very basic, which I showed in the beginning. Uh, the, actually, the top right one is a pose which, which I gave in Greece when I went for my contest. It's a side profile. You see the way I've, hold, I've held my hand in my waist where my fingers are visible. Okay. Yes, finally, you can ask me uh, questions. If you have any doubts, you can do the questions to me. Uh, Adelina, can we uh, quit the screen sharing so that, you know, we can find the, all of that? Okay, sure. And I'll just share a quick thing about myself. That is, uh, as I'm an image consultant, I uh, take the following courses. That is the Beauty Queen and You, where I teach about wardrobe management, image management, how do you dress properly for an event, which is a 16-hour course. Then there's a personality and image management, how you develop personality and how do you present yourself in a positive way, which is around 12 hours. Then there's personal grooming and wardrobe management, etiquette starting from dining, social, uh, your telephone etiquettes, everything. Makeup and healthy lifestyle, which includes a customized diet and makeup classes. And one day crash course for pageants and image management. I'll just stop sharing my screen now and we can have the questions. Okay, so if anybody has a question, please go ahead. I think Meghna has a question. Yes, Meghna. Ma'am, you something said about that lips. I yes. can't understand. Huh. Okay, Please. I said I said about when you're posing, you should have a. Sometimes when you're not smiling, you have to give a blank expression. We see a very a blank expression. We we talk about having a parted lips. Parted lips means suppose you look straight, piercing eyes. This this should be parted. It should not be. This okay. way. Okay, this is what this is the right kind of expression we uh, what we mean when we are posing. Okay. Okay. Thank Clear? You. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I think Namrata has put a question in the chat box. If you could read that, Adogino. 